This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This is the second of uh, two lectures, Cost Classification Behaviour. Now, in the, um, the first of these two lectures, I went through cost classification, which is the terminology, uh, direct costs, indirect costs, or overheads. In this one, we're looking at what we call the behaviour of the costs. And what it is, if you look at um, section two of the uh, chapter, it says that it is expected that costs will increase as production increases. Remember, we talk about production costs, but the more we produce, the more you will expect the total cost to be. But the exact way in which they behave can differ. Different costs behave different ways. And let me explain. You see, there's four categories there. First of all, a variable cost. And what I mean by a variable cost, it's where the total cost varies with the level of production. For example, Materials is a good example. Materials, let's say, are $5 per unit. Well, surely, if I make one unit, it's costing in total $5. If I make two units, it's costing $10, three units, $15, and so on. Well, that's what we mean by variable cost. And if we did a little graph showing the cost against the production. Surely, as far as the total cost was concerned, if you produce none, uh, there's no cost of materials. But uh, the more you produce, the more the total cost will be. So that's what we call a variable cost. Uh, and be careful in the exam, be very careful. The total cost you'd expect to go like that, but the cost per unit surely if materials are five dollars a unit, doesn't matter how many we produce, it'll stay at five dollars. Now okay, there are situations where the cost per unit could change. You know, if we produced a lot. Uh, for the moment, I'm not the scientific concern, for the moment, for paper F2, something like materials, it's $5 a unit, however many we make. And as a result, the total cost, well, as I've just shown here, um, increases with the production. So that's fine, things like materials, it, it's a variable cost. The second category, though, is a fixed cost. And a fixed cost doesn't vary with the level of production. It does not change with the level of production. An example of that is the rent of the factory. It's a production cost, but if our factory costs 10,000 a year to rent, surely we'll be paying out 10,000 whether I produce one unit or I produce a thousand units. Uh, and so a fixed cost, again, if you're asked to draw, well, you won't be drawing, but if you're asked to identify a graph of this, Well, again, the rent of our factory, however many units I produce, it's fixed up to, let's say, 10,000. Uh, one neat thing there, though, that by definition is a fixed cost. In, in it doesn't mean it's never going to change. You know, rent of the factory might go up next year. So it's not fixed at 10,000 forever. But the point is, it doesn't change with the level of production. 
that's not going to stick its cost. However, suppose you were asked about the cost per unit. Think about this. If we only produce one unit, how much is that one unit going to cost us here? It's going to cost 10,000. But if we produced two units, we're still paying 10,000 in total. If it's 10,000 in total, it's 5,000 each. What happens if I produced 100 units? I'm still paying 10,000 in total. But if uh, I pay 10,000 and I produce 100 units, ah, each one's then only costing 100. So although the total fixed cost will remain unchanged, the cost per unit uh, will fall. Now, in fact, it's a curve, uh, but this isn't a maths exam. So, you know, if you've done maths, you, you'll understand. But otherwise, I'm not the slightest bit worried. Uh, but simply, the more you produce, the cost per unit for this factory rent will be lower. All right, now those are the two main categories, variable and fixed. Um, the next two, um, what you might call variations on it, uh, first of all, a stepped fixed cost. I'll illustrate this uh, immediately by graph. Suppose again that we're looking at the rent of the factory. Uh, maybe it's 10,000. But that factory is only capable, of, the maximum we can produce in the factory is perhaps 100,000 units. And if we started to produce more than 100,000, we'd need a second factory. So up to 10,000, we just need one factory. Sorry, up to 100,000, so we're paying $10,000. Over 100,000 though, all of a sudden we need two factories. And it's then going to uh, be fixed at 20,000. So you have a fixed cost over a range up to 10, uh, sorry, up to 100,000 units. Uh, it's fixed at $10,000. Over 100,000 units, it's fixed at $20,000 and maybe carries on going up later. Well, we call that a stepped fixed cost. Stepped, I think, for fairly obvious reasons. Finally, uh, semi variable fixed. Now, I've explained the variable cost, something like materials. Is variable. Five dollars a unit, more units, more cost. I've explained fixed cost. Forget the step for the moment, uh, but something like the rent of the factory, total cost is fixed, whatever the production. But a lot of um, costs are a combination of the two. For instance, electricity for the factory. Maybe we get one electricity bill each month. But what we're using electricity, we're using it for two things. We're using it to power the machines. And in addition, we're using electricity to light the factory. Now, powering the machines surely is going to be variable. The more we produce, the more we use the machines, the more the cost will be. Lighting the factory, well, maybe I need the lights on. However many I'm producing, whether it's one or a hundred. And so this is more likely to be fixed. But I only get one bill. But part of it, you know, perhaps a hundred dollars a month is a fixed cost because it's lighting the factory. 
The extra in the bill is a variable cost, depending on how many are produced. And what's the graph of that going to look like? As I said, maybe lighting the factory is $100 a month and we'll pay that whatever happens. So that's a fixed cost. Uh, but in addition, there's the electricity to run the machines. Well, if we don't produce any, there's no extra electricity. But, and we're just paying the fixed cost of 100, the more I produce, the more electricity for the machines. And so the total cost will look like that. And it's made up of two bits. It's made up of the fixed cost plus the variable. So that's a nice one. All right, nearly there, over the page, uh, I've written linear assumption. I did mention this earlier that we do assume that the variable cost, it goes up, but it goes up in a straight line. Think back to materials. If every unit is $5, then more units, more $5. It would be linear. Now, in real life, it needn't be for several reasons, but for paper F2, uh, we will make that assumption. Uh, behaviour of man manufacturing costs, um, assuming this linearity, all costs are either fixed or variable or a combination of the two, this semi-variable business. Uh, and check you agree with what I've written below, direct costs must be variable. Materials, $5 a unit, it's variable. Labour. $10 a unit, it's variable. Direct costs must be variable. Whereas indirect costs are overheads, they could be either. So look at the little table. Direct costs, they're variable, the tick. Production overheads could be either. Electricity for the machines, variable. Electricity to light the factory, fixed. Rent of the factory, fixed. So they could be either. Non-manufacturing costs, which yet again I'm not really interested in for the moment, but they could be either. You know, the accounts department is likely to be a fixed cost. But things like delivery to the customers. Surely the more you sell, the more you'd expect to be paying for delivery, the total delivery cost. So although we're not really bothered, uh, non-manufacturing could be either. Uh, almost finally, a nice little simple exercise on semi-variable. Look at example six with me. So at last a bit of numbers. The total costs of a business for differing levels of output are as follows. Maybe we've looked at two months. You know, one month we produce 200 units and the total cost was 30, they're in thousands of pre-shades, so 30,000. Another month, we produced 1,000 units, and as you'd expect, the total cost was higher at 110,000. Well, clearly, the cost isn't a fixed cost, otherwise it would be the same each month. However, it's not a truly variable cost either. Because you see, if it was variable, the cost per unit would be the same. So 200 for 30,000, that would be a cost per unit of 150. On the other hand, 110,000 for 1,000 is a cost per unit of 110. And so it's not fixed, it's not variable, it's actually semi-variable. Part of that cost is fixed. I don't know, maybe 10,000 a month is a fixed cost. Part of it is variable, then there's a variable cost of $10 a unit. And our job is to calculate 
what is the fixed cost and what is the variable cost per unit. And we're going to use something called the high-low method. And what we do is this. We've only got two months there. It wouldn't matter. We'll look at this again in a later chapter. It wouldn't matter how many um, months we've looked at. But we take the high one. Uh, a thousand units at a cost of 110. Uh, we take the lowest one, and the lowest one is 200 units, and the cost was 30. And we say, well, why are the two different? Why is the cost higher? Remember, any fixed cost will be the same in both cases. So the only reason that the high one has a higher cost is the extra variable cost of the extra units. We look at the difference. And we said the high one had 800 more units. And there was an extra cost of 80,000. And again, because the fixed cost isn't changing, that 80,000 must be the extra variable cost of those extra units. And so the variable cost It's an extra 80,000 for 800 units. So how much per unit? 100 dollars. So we now know the variable cost per unit. What about the fixed cost? Well, now we can get it. Go to either of those two. If I go to the high one, We know what the total cost is, 110,000. Part of that is the variable cost. And what's the total variable cost? Well, it was 1,000 units. We now know it's 100 a unit. And so the variable cost in total is 100,000. Well, if the total is 110, that extra 10,000 is the fixed cost. And I could have gone to either. I mean, just let's check it. What about the low one? Well, the low one, we're saying the fixed cost is 10,000. In addition, there's a variable cost, it's 200 units, variable 100 a unit. And what does that come to? 200 times 100 is 20,000, plus the fixed of 10,000, it comes to 30,000, which is, I hope, yes, what we have. Uh, don't waste time in the exam doing the check. There's enormous time pressure in the exam. You know, be confident. Don't do either the high one or the low one. Uh, but you don't want to waste time checking anything on it. It is wasting time. So, a nice easy exercise. Um, you'll see later, it's, it can be a very approximate exercise, and there's a later chapter where we'll revise it, but also look at another way, a more efficient way of doing it. Uh, the question itself, it said, A, what are the fixed and variable elements? Well, we've done it. It also said, describe the relationship in the form of a linear equation. Mm. Well, all it's doing is what I did there, that surely whatever happens, the total cost It will be equal to the fixed cost, which for ours is 10,000, plus a variable cost. And what will the variable cost be? Well, it's $100 a unit. 
it'll be 100 times x, where x is the number of units. So that's what it means by percentages and equation. All right, last page. You've got there an outline of a cost card. Uh, have a look through that yourself, but it's uh, in the chapters that follow that we're going to go into cost cards proper, so I'm not going to waste time now. And also, uh, have a quick read of Section 3, Responsibility Centres. The reason I'm not lecturing it now is it relates more to something called divisionalisation, um, which there's a chapter on later. Uh, so I don't want to confuse the issue now, but do have a read through. Um, and then I'll remind you about it when we come to the other chapter.